Hello and welcome to a video presentation on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Here's what you'll learn. How to add and subtract mixed numbers. Now I'm going to present a couple of methods for adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Method number one. We can turn the mixed numbers into improper fractions and then add or subtract. Method number two. We can deal with the whole numbers and the fraction portions separately when we add or subtract. Let's look at method number one first, converting mixed numbers to improper fractions. This method is a simple three-step process. Step one, turn each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction. Step two, add or subtract the fractions as you normally would by finding a common denominator if necessary. And step three, change any improper fraction answers back into a mixed number. Now, I like this method the best. It's the easiest to understand and it's less prone to error. Let me show you how it works. Let's add three and a quarter and six and a quarter and express the answer in simplest form. We start by writing down the problem. So I'll write down three and one quarter plus six and one quarter. Now convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction. Do you remember how to do that? If not, I'll walk you through the first one. For the first mixed number, we're going to multiply the denominator 4 with the whole number 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Then we add the numerator 1 to get 13. So 3 and 1 quarter as an improper fraction is 13 over 4. For the second mixed number, 4 times 6 is 24, plus the 1 in the numerator gives us 25 over 4. Now we can add the fractions together. Since we already have a common denominator 4, we can add the numerators 13 and 25 together directly. 13 and 25 give us the numerator of our answer, which is 38 and our denominator will be the common denominator 4. Now let's turn this improper fraction back into a mixed number and we do that by dividing. 38 divided by 4 is 9 so 9 will be the whole number portion of our answer and we get a remainder of 2 so 2 becomes the numerator of our fraction. So our answer is 9 and 2 fourths but the fraction two-fourths can be reduced. We can divide the numerator and denominator by the common factor two. So let's go ahead and do that. Divide the top by two and the bottom by two. Now let's bring down the whole number into our final answer. Bring down the nine. And our reduced fraction becomes two divided by two is one. So we have one in the numerator of our reduced fraction and four divided by two is two in the denominator. So our final answer is nine and one half. Now let's look at method number two, adding whole numbers and fractions separately. This is a four step process. Step one, we're going to break the mixed numbers up into their whole number and fraction portions. Then we're going to add or subtract the fraction portions separately. Then we add or subtract the whole numbers separately. And finally, reduce the fraction portion to its simplest form. Now let's work the last problem again using this method instead. We should still get the same answer of nine and a half. Let's see if we do. We're going to add three and a quarter and six and a quarter. So let's write down the problem. Three and one quarter plus six and one quarter. Now this time we're going to break the mixed numbers up into whole numbers and fractions. So let's put the whole numbers down, three plus six, and now add the fractions. We have one quarter plus another one quarter. Now we can add the fractions together. Since we have a common denominator of four, 
we can add the numerators 1 and 1 together and that's going to give us 2. So our fraction will be 2 fourths. So now we have 3 plus 6 plus our fraction of 2 fourths. Now again, two-fourths can be reduced to one-half, and we do that by dividing top and bottom by two. So now we have three plus six plus our reduced fraction of one-half. Let's go ahead and add the whole numbers now. Three and six give us nine, and let's bring down the fraction, one-half. So our answer is nine and one-half. Now, as you can see, both methods give us the same answer. However, this second method gets a little more complicated when we start subtracting mixed numbers. The fractions could become negative, and that would require us to borrow from the whole numbers, and it just becomes more difficult to solve the problem properly. So method number one is much easier to use for both addition and subtraction. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to focus on using method number one. Now let's work some more examples. Let's add 2 and 11 fifteenths and 5 and 5 sixths. And again, we'll express the answer in simplest form. Start by writing down the problem. 2 and 11 fifteenths plus 5 and 5 sixths. Again, convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction. And for the first mixed number, 15 times 2 gives us 30, plus 11 in the numerator gives us 41 over 15. For the second mixed number, 6 times 5 is 30, plus the 5 in the numerator is 35, for 35 over 6. Now let's add the fractions together. Since the denominators 15 and 6 are different, we need to find a common denominator before we add the fractions. Now, we take the smaller number 6 and see if it divides evenly into the larger number 15. And it doesn't. So let's try the next multiple of the larger number 15, which is 30. So change 15 into 30. Now, 6 will divide evenly into 30. And what that means is we'll use 30 as the common denominator for our fractions. So let's set up two fractions with 30 in the denominator. Now we have to figure out the new numerators to make our equivalent fractions. Now for the first fraction, we multiplied the denominator, the original 15, by 2 to get 30. So we have to also multiply the numerator 41 by 2, so that will give us 82 in the numerator of the first fraction. For the second fraction, we multiplied the denominator 6 by 5 to change it to 30. So we'll also multiply the numerator 35 by 5 to get 175 in the numerator of the second fraction. Now with a common denominator, we can add the numerators together. 8 plus 175 will give us the numerator of our answer, which is 257. And of course, the denominator is just the common denominator, 30. Now our improper fraction answer can be turned into a mixed number. 257 divided by 30 is 8. So the whole number portion of our answer is going to be 8. And since 30 times 8 is 240, that means we'll have a remainder of 17 in the numerator of our fraction and 30 in the denominator. The fraction 17 thirtieths is already in simplest form. So our answer is just 8 and 17 thirtieths. Now let's subtract 10 and 3 thirteenths minus 3 and 5 thirteenths. And again, express the answer in simplest form. First, write down the problem 10 and 3 thirteenths minus a 3 and 5 thirteenths. We're going to convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction again. So for the first mixed number, 13 times 10 is 130, plus 3 in the numerator gives us 133 
over 13. For the second mixed number, 13 times 3 is 39, plus the 5 in the numerator gives us 44 over 13. Now we can subtract the fractions. Since we already have a common denominator of 13, that means we can subtract the numerators 133 and 44 directly. 133 minus 44 will give us the numerator of our answer, which is 89. And of course the denominator is just our common denominator, 13. Now our improper fraction can be turned back into a mixed number. 89 divided by 13 is 6. So 6 is the whole number portion of our answer. We know that 13 times 6 is 78, so we're going to have a remainder of 11 over 13. Now the fraction is already in simplest form, 11 over 13. So our answer is 6 and 11 thirteenths. Now let's subtract another problem, 3 and 1 third minus 2 and 5 eighths. Again, start by writing down the problem, 3 and 1 third minus 2 and 5 eighths. We're going to convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction. For the first mixed number, 3 times 3 is 9, plus the 1 in the numerator is 10. So we have 10 over 3. For the second mixed number, 8 times 2 is 16, plus the 5 in the numerator gives us 21 over 8. Now subtract the fractions. Since the denominators 3 and 8 are different, we need to find a common denominator before we subtract. Now since the smaller number 3 doesn't divide evenly into the larger number 8, let's try the next multiple of the larger number, 8. That would be 16. So let's change 8 into 16. But still, 3 doesn't divide evenly into 16. So we're going to try the next multiple of 8, which is 24. So change 16 to 24. Now 3 will divide evenly into 24. So that means we're going to use 24 as the common denominator of our fractions. So let's set up two fractions with 24's in the denominator. Now we have to figure out the new numerators to make our equivalent fractions, of course. For the first fraction, we multiply the denominator 3 by 8 to change it into 24. So that means we also have to multiply the numerator 10 by 8 to get 80 in the numerator of the first fraction. For the second fraction, we multiply the denominator 8 by 3 to turn it into 24. So we also multiply the numerator of that fraction, 21, by 3, and it becomes 63 in the numerator of our second fraction. Now with a common denominator, we can subtract the numerators. 80 minus 63 gives us the numerator of our answer, which is 17, and of course it's over our common denominator 24. The fraction is already in simplest form, 17 over 24. So our answer is 17 24ths. Now let's subtract 1 and 1 quarter minus 4 and 5 sixths. Again, express your answer in simplest form. Start by writing down the problem first, 1 and 1 quarter minus 4 and 5 sixths. We're going to convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction again. For the first mixed number, 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 1 in the numerator is 5, so we have 5 over 4. For the second mixed number, 6 times 4 is 24, plus the 5 in the numerator, and we end up with 29 over 6 for that mixed number. Now we can subtract the fractions. Since the denominators 4 and 6 are different, we first have to find a common denominator before we subtract. Now since 4 doesn't divide evenly into the larger number 6, let's try the next multiple of 6. That's 12, so we'll change 6 
into a 12. 4 does divide evenly into 12, so what that means is that we'll use 12 as the common denominator for our fractions. So let's go ahead and set up two fractions now with 12 in the denominator. Now for the first fraction, we have to multiply the denominator by 4, or of 4 rather, by 3 to get a 12. So that means we also multiply the numerator 5 by 3 to get 15. And to get an equivalent fraction for the second fraction, we multiplied the denominator 6 by 2 to get 12. So we also multiply the numerator 29 by 2, and that becomes 58. Now with the common denominator, we can subtract the numerators. We have 15 minus 58, which gives us a negative 43 in the numerator over our common denominator of 12. Now our improper fraction can be turned back into a mixed number, and we do that by dividing. But we're going to ignore the negative sign for now and just divide 43 by 12. 43 divided by 12 is 3. So we'll write down a 3 as the whole number portion. And we know that 12 times 3 is 36, so we're going to have a remainder of 7 over our common denominator of 12. And now put the negative sign back into our answer. And the fraction 7 twelfths is already in simplest form, so our answer is just negative 3 and 7 twelfths. And let's finish this presentation with a word problem. Andy made a chili recipe with four and three quarter cans of black beans and five and a quarter cans of kidney beans. How many cans of beans did Andy use? Well, we need to find an expression that we can solve. Since Andy is adding cans of beans to his recipe, this is obviously going to be an addition problem. So let's set up the problem. We've got four and three quarters plus five and one quarter. We're going to convert each mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction. So for the first mixed number, four times four is sixteen, plus three in the numerator gives us nineteen over four. For the second mixed number, four times five is twenty, plus the one in the numerator is twenty-one. So we have twenty-one over 4. Now since we already have a common denominator of 4 in both of our fractions, that means we can add the numerators 19 and 21 together right now, and that gives us 40 in the numerator of our answer. And 4, our common denominator, is the denominator of our answer. Now our improper fraction can be turned into a mixed number. 40 divided by 4 is exactly 10. So that's our answer. Andy used a total of 10 cans of beans in his chili. Now I want to provide you with one final thought on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. When adding and subtracting more than two mixed numbers, it's easier to work with just two of those numbers at a time. Remember to follow the order of operations. You work addition and subtraction problems in order as you get to them from left to right to get the correct answer. Congratulations! You've learned how to add and subtract mixed numbers.